We welcome you to our Facebook live broadcast. We want to enjoy you to be entered. Gather your family around your phone, your tablets. We're going to have a joyful time. We're going to celebrate the name of Jesus. Welcome to the Salem Institution of Baptist Church Facebook live broadcast. Let's enter into the joy of the Lord as our music ministry blesses us with praise and worship. Put your hands together and let the Lord's world know this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. From every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We who you are and you are good yes you are yes you are you are good Lord you are good and your mercy endureth forever Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. And you Can we ask you to bow your heads for a word of prayer on this morning? Father God, we come to the throne of grace this morning saying thank you, Lord, for another day. We come to the Lord this morning just saying thank you. Through all the chaos throughout the cities, Father God, throughout the nations, you still reign, Father God. You still reign supreme, showing your love is throughout all the land. So we come this morning saying thank you. We come this morning, Father, saying Help the people this morning to understand who you are, Father God, that you are the God that sits up high and looks down low and shows his love upon his people. This morning we come, Father God, asking you to strengthen us, Father God, those who, Father God, who are fainting right now, those who are disbelief, Father God, about what's going on in this world. But we come to you because you know best that you are the Father that you never will leave us nor forsake us. You always show us a way to escape, Father God. So right now, Father God, through all the dejection and riddle and run around, Father God, for worldly things, Father God, we know you have a spiritual love to keep your children, Father God. So show them right now, Father God, who you are, Father God. Give them hope. Give them what they need upon this day, Father God, to move on, to press on anyhow, to see what the end's going to be, Father God. Right now, Father God, lift up your people, Father God, through your word, Father God, let them, Father God, know who you are, Father God, right now. For through all the things that we're going through, Father God, you are the only answer, Father God. You, Father God, who let your son, Blade on Calvary, Father God, risen on the third day, Father God, with all power in his hands, still reigns supreme, Father God, through thousands and thousands of years, Father God.
God. Nothing has received you, Father God. So right now we ask you to come, Father God, and lift up the people, those who believe, those who don't believe, those who, Father God, are confused right now, Father God, those who, Father God, don't understand, Father God. We ask you for direction, reconnection, reconciliation, Father God. We ask you right now, Father God, to come from the inside out, from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. Give them, Father God, this day, their daily bread, Father God. Give the children, Father God, peace. Give the children, Father God, nourishment, Father God, as you did the 5,000, Father God, when you fed them, Father God, the five loaves and two fish, Father God. Give them resurrection right now upon this day. And we come to you saying thank you. We come to you shouting hallelujah, because victory, the victory is ours, just says the Lord. The victory belongs to you. And we shouted from the hills of the mountaintop that the Lord reigns supreme, that this is his day and his day alone. So we thank you for the, letting us worship. We thank you for letting us sing and pray. We thank you for the man of God who is about to perform your word, Father God. Give him strength from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Let the words come out plain through his mouth, Father God, of what you have him to say upon this morning. And we, Father God, shall believe in all that is being heard. So we thank you in the name of the Father. We thank you in the name of the Son. And we thank you in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Good morning, church. First of all, welcome once again to everybody present here this morning, as well as everybody joining us on Facebook Live. Um, Thank you, first of all, for joining us this morning. We know that we're living, unfortunately, in uncertain times this morning, but we know that God is still able, amen? And this is just a temporary time. Um, if you're joining us on Facebook Live, you already know where we are, but if not, um, our Facebook Live is at Salem, IBC, Dallas. And for those who are not able to join us uh, at this moment as we go live, you can also join the replay on our YouTube channel. Salem Institutional Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas. So please do that if you're not able to join us um, on Facebook Live. You can catch the replay of the full service afterward on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. Once again, we are living in uncertain times uh, due to the coronavirus and the spread. We want to make sure that we're doing all the things that we can do, uh, expressing our diligence to make sure that our members uh, are safe and healthy. Uh, but we also know that trouble doesn't last always. And so during these uncertain times, during this season, we ask that you would continue to pray for this church, uh, pray for our, our fellow members, and pray just for our, um, our fellow citizens in our country at large. Uh, we ask from uh, guidance from our leaders and our medical professionals. But once again, we look up to the hills from whence comes our help and that help coming from the Lord. I stand this morning just to say thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. You've kept me safe. You woke me up this morning. And, and that's really a testament that we can all give this morning. If we open our eyes this morning, God gave us this day. And we just say thank you for that. Uh, we also must keep in mind that as we care for ourselves and our families, we must also think of other people. Think of others who are going through things and, and going through circumstances that are much worse than ours. And so we pray for them as well. I would encourage you, for those who are not here this morning, that you will please uh, continue to send in your tithes and your offering. You can do that in multiple ways. You can give online through our Givelify app. You can also give online through our PayPal. Of course, you can send checks, money orders here to the church. Our physical address, 3918 Crozier Street, Dallas, Texas, 75215. And last but not leastly, you can also give uh, via credit or debit card. Um, I've given, been given permission by Sister Martin to give her her cell phone number, so I'm not just putting it out there, okay? <laughs> you can do that at 214-912-9628. That number, once again, is 214-912-9628. Call Sister Martin, give her your credit card, your debit card information, and she can process those payments securely. So once again, we thank God for everybody who has joined us this morning. We ask you to continue to uh, pray for this church, pray for our pastor, our leadership. And we look forward uh, to seeing you once again. But in the meantime, join us on Facebook Live, join us on YouTube, and continue uh, to pray as we uh, go through these, these, these uncertain times. But again, God is able. We put our trust in him. And we ask that you would uh, continue to give as you would, as you would be here as we continue to maintain and see that this church go on and go forward. 
We thank you, we love you, and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Pastor. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way, and yes, I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way. And yes, I praise you. God be the glory for all the things he has done. But even in times like these, our God is still good. Our God is still merciful. Our God still has all power in the palm of his hand. In times of extreme anxiety, in times of confusion, in times of a fluid situation that seems to affect and to grind our world to the to a halt. God is still good, and he still reigns supreme. And we invite you to continue to worship and praise our God, because even in times like these, he is worthy to be praised. On this morning, as we meet you wherever you may be, we invite you to grab your Bibles, your tablets, your smartphones, as we ask the question that we have asked for centuries, is there a word from the Lord? And the answer that God gave in the book of Revelation still is clear today. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Go with me to the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6. And I want to read one verse, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. In the day, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Father, in this moment in which we stand. We know that you are still a God that holds the world in the palm of your hand. You're still the God that has power, that is infinite, that can change our situation in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. 
And Father, as we bow together in your presence, I ask that we will feel your love and your provision in ways we can't even imagine. Father, for our brothers and sisters that are facing anxiety, I pray for the peace that passes all understanding. In the midst of uncertainty, we still believe in the song, the words of that old song. We know who holds tomorrow and we know who holds our hand. Use me, Father, in this moment that I may speak clearly and boldly that someone may have a deeper relationship with God, but most of all that someone may feel your hand on their shoulder and in their lives right now. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And collectively, wherever we may be, shall we all say together, amen. Isaiah has a word for us, and I want to focus in on that first verse. When he says, it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. For a few moments, I want to talk to you from the subject disrupted, but not distracted. We are disrupted, but we're not distracted. Paul has a word for us in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, where he tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, in so much the more as we see the day approaching. Here Paul stresses the importance of the assembly, the people of God coming together. For the sake of clarity, let us first examine what Paul means by the assembly. Unlike other doctrine or theological passages of Paul, he uses a very general and, but specific and strategic language. He does not use the phrase, just go to church, but he uses the term differently by saying, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. The word assembling means to come together at a particular time and at a particular location. Yet today the assembly has taken on new meanings because we, can, we are assembled today but not physically in the same location. We find ourselves in our living rooms, we find ourselves on our couches, we find ourselves at home, we find ourselves in our cars. We are gathered together, but we're not gathered in the same place. But I assure you, we are still gathered together as long as we have the same purpose in mind. God is intentional. And maybe God is using this season to teach us that our assembling together was never limited to sitting side by side. Maybe for too long the church has gotten too comfortable coming into building, sitting physically next to one another. And God is using this season to remind us that it is more than being in the same room together. But as long as we are united with the same purpose and with the same vigor of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, I guarantee you, family, we are all assembled together. Assembling may mean in terms of being united in purpose. Maybe for too long we prioritize the mechanics of worship and the location of workers, but a few days ago we lost all the mechanics at one time. Maybe for too long we got focused on colors, we got focused on uniforms, we got focused on orders of service, but all of that was stripped away in a moment, seemed like a twinkling of an eye, but the world is watching and the world is asking us a question today. Can we still worship without the mechanics? Can we still worship when we don't have a large amount of people in the same room? Can we still worship even in the midst of anxiety? But family, we don't have to be in the same place as long as we got the same purpose. We don't have to be in the same place because my Bible teaches us that God is everywhere at the same time. We are assembled when we are walking together. We are assembled together when we are praying together. We are assembled together when we are praising our God together. And we are assembled together right now. Oh, family, we cannot forsake the assembling of ourselves together. This is why that there was always tension between Jesus and the religious officials. Because they focus on coming, 
but Jesus focused on coming together. They focused on church stuff, but Jesus focused on coming together. You remember they told Jesus that you shouldn't eat with sinners. Jesus said it's not the well that needs a doctor, but it's the sick. They said, Jesus, you shouldn't go to unclean places. Jesus said, I'm a first responder. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For when the night comes, no man can work. Jesus, there was never any restrictions to the assembly, no matter your situation, no matter your condition, no matter your anxiety. I love it where the Bible says, come as you are. Bring your anxiety, bring your frustrations to him, and our God is able to give a word into our lives. But I got news for you, fam. There's something powerful that happens when the people of God come together. Here in our text, we have the prophet describing what happened when he assembled in the temple. He did not arrive on a feast day. He did not arrive on a day where there was a mass crowd in the temple. He comes by himself. How striking it is that what the prophet experienced then, we experience right now. In the midst of the coronavirus we, and anxiety, we come to the temple in scarcity, lacking the numbers that we once had, facing with occupancy restrictions from our city, looking out for our seniors, looking out for one another. We tell them to stay home. We tell them to be safe. But in times like these, I'm glad I've been reminded this week that God's power was never limited to numbers. God's power was never limited to the amount of people in the same building, for Scripture says very clearly, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be in the midst of them. So if you got two or three around you, no matter if they're in the same building or they're online, which or they're Facebooking live, which I guarantee you, God is right there with them. Although Salem, we're here under restrictions. We are not under power. We are not powerless. He enters the temple in a solemn time. In verse 1, the Bible says, he says, I came in in the year that King Uzziah died. This is important because his, Uzziah's death was a disruption to the nation. He was, by most accounts, a pretty good king who brought revival to the nation. But now that the king was dead, the nation needed spiritual direction. Oh, family, when we need spiritual direction, it's time for us to get into the temple. And while in the temple, he experiences the transformational power of worship. I want you to first of all notice that he's in the temple in spite of a disruptive environment. It's a disruptive environment. It seems like the nation had grinded to a halt, just like today. This may explain why he's in the temple by himself, because a disruptive environment can become a major distraction to worship. When we're in the midst of our disruption, sometimes it distracts us from our worship. We are so glued to our television, watching the next news and radio broadcast that we miss and that we cannot focus on our worship anymore. We are worshiping under a disruptive environment which can be a distraction to worship. When we experience disruptions, if we're not careful, they can drive us away from worship because a disruption is something that breaks up our normal routine. Yet Isaiah stands because instead of a disruption driving him away from worship, it drove him to worship. I know we're experiencing great disruptions right now that has put the brakes on our society, but don't let this disruption become a distraction. That's what happened with Peter. You remember uh, that old story when Peter walks on water, even in the midst of a storm. He, Jesus says, come on unto me. Peter steps out of the boat and begins to walk on water. He is successfully walking in the midst of a disruption environment. But the moment he gets distracted by his disruption, he started sinking. 
The moment he gets distracted, we are in a disruptive environment. I got news for you. The moment we get distracted from looking at Jesus, we'll start sinking. But the power of this story is that Jesus is right there, even in the midst of our disruption. And whenever we get distracted, Jesus will reach out and grab us and put us back again on sure footing. I guarantee you that no matter how much anxiety you may be experiencing right now, I got news for you. Jesus is close enough to reach you. He's close enough to pull you back and to pull you back on strong footing. Worship is a powerful weapon. Worship is the power, a powerful tool against our disruption. Watch me when I tell you this. How do I know worship is stronger than our disruption? Is because we spell worship, W-O-R-S-H-I-P. But if you change the O to an A, it becomes W-A-R-S-H-I-P. Worship becomes a warship. What I'm trying to get you to understand, it's time for the people of God to declare war on this virus. It's time for the people of God to turn and declare war on our disruption. It's time for the people of God to use our worship to transform our experiences. It's a time for the church to declare war on this disruption because the coronavirus cannot stand up against our worship. No disruption can stand up against our worship. Oh, family, it's time to transform our worship into our worship. He stands in the midst of a disruptive environment because it was his routine to be in the temple. I've discovered even now that there's nothing wrong with coming to church out of a routine. This is why this time is so strange to us. Because coming to church on a Sunday for so many, coming to a building was our routine. Sunday morning worship was our habit. But I got news for this virus. I got news for our disruption. Christian habits are hard to break. That we got people still gathering in worship. We have people still going on Facebook Live, still going on social media because it is our habit to receive a word from the Lord each and every day. And this is still the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. It has become my habit. It has become my routine to wake up every morning with a smile on my face, saying the Lord woke me up this morning and my mind, it stayed on Jesus. I got news for you. Family, this is a good habit that cannot be broken. The reason why it's a habit that cannot be broken is because my habit, our habits of worship, was developed over a long period of time. They have been developed in times of adversity. They have been developed in times of difficulty. They have been developed in times of struggle. They have been developed in times of sickness. They have been developed in times of hopelessness. They have been developed in times of scarcity. They have been developed in times of depression. Our worship has been developed under some extraordinary circumstances. And just like gold is tried in the fire, Every time the goldsmith pulls it out, the gold is stronger than it went in. I got news for you. When God pulls us out of this fire that we're in, we're going to be stronger. We're going to be better. We're going to be wiser. We're going to be more pure. Our worship is going to be more powerful and more transformative because of what we've been through right now. Family disruptions will come. But let me assure you, the life disruptions are always temporary. I don't care how bad it may be, it's only a temporary experience. Don't call this situation the new normal. No, 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 it's not. It's not the new normal, it's a temporary thing. I know it looks permanent. It looks like we'll never move beyond this, but every adversity we have experienced in life is a temporary moment. If you don't believe me, remember when we had swine flu. Remember when we had Ebola. Remember when we had West Nile. Remember when we had all of these plagues upon our land, and they all have been relegated to the past. They are now in our rearview mirrors. They are now behind us, and this is a time, family, where we need to look in our own rearview mirrors and think about the things God has already 
already brought us through, the many mountains we have already climbed, the valleys we have already come through, how many giants we've already killed, how many times have God brought us out over and over and over again? And I got news for you, our God is still powerful. The blood still works. God is still able to do exceedingly, abundantly above anything we can ask or think all have been relegated to the past. And as long as we hold unto our faith, we can add one more virus, one more pandemic to the history books. And I got news for Corona. I got news for every pandemic. The history books are not filled yet. They got room for one more. The history books still got room for one more pandemic. They still got room for one more disruption. They still got room for one more struggle. They still got room for one more disruption in life. And I got news for your family. We still got more in front of us than we got behind us. Lastly, I worship. In worship, the prophet receives a revelation from God. It was not in the form of a vision of the next king, but of the king of kings and of the Lord of Lords. The king of Israel had died. The throne was empty. The nation was wondering who was going to be the next to ascend unto the throne. And you know what, family? I'm glad God did not give him a vision of the next king. God said, in times like these, you don't need to see the next king. You need to see the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. You need to know that I'm still on my throne right now. He sits him and notice he's sitting high and he's sitting lifted up. He's not sitting down on the floor. He's in the temple, but he's elevated. He's high and he's lifted up. Yes, this world was disrupted, but God is still sitting on the throne. What I love about this Pavlis family, remember when I tell you this, God is still in the same place. He was sitting on the throne in the beginning. He's still sitting on the throne right now. He was sitting on the throne before he said, let there be. He was still sitting on the throne before the world was created. And he's still in the same place right, right now. He's high and he's lifted up. I love the fact that God gives him a vision of himself. Salem, in times like these, we need to see God still sitting on his throne. God is still sitting on the throne. This week we have been saturated by press conference after press conference of our county commissioner, of our mayor, of our governor, of our government officials. We have been inundated with one press conference after another. And, and I know they have their place. I know that they're doing their best to keep us informed. They're doing their best to keep us educated, to keep us safe. But I got news for you. In times like these, I need to see God standing at the podium. I need to see God standing in front of the camera. I need to see God saying, I'm disrupting your regular scheduled programming to let you know I'm still on the job. I'm still on my throne. I still got all power in the palm of my hand. I'm still everywhere at the same time. I still know everything. I'm still on the throne. And guess what? I'm high and I am lifted up. I still, God got a word for breaking, breaking attention. Don't miss this scheduled programming. God is saying, I'm sorry for interrupting your normal broadcast, but I got a word for you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. I'm sorry to interrupt your routine, but I got a word for you. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. I know you want to pay attention to something else, but I want to drop something in your spirit. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. I got news for you. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. If God be for you, he's more than the world against us. Oh, family, I know it's dark right now. I know it's hard to see out of this cloud right now. I know it's challenging right now. I know it can be depressing right now, but I got news for you. Morning is coming. Morning is coming. If we just keep holding on just a little while longer, Morning is coming. It looks like the day is not going to come. It looks like the sun is not going to shine again. But I got news for you. We used to sing the song, I'm so glad trouble don't last always. I'm, I'm so glad that we can be in clouds, but the sun is going to shine. And I got news for your family. It's the sun is coming. The morning is coming. This season is testing us to asking, can we still worship when we can't come in the temple? Can we still worship? When we have to reach in so many different ways, I got news for you, the message remained the same. All we did was change the method. 
Corona didn't stop the church. It just shifted the church. That's powerful. It didn't stop God from being good. It didn't stop us from praying. It didn't stop us from worshiping. It just made us praise in different ways. How striking it is that we can now reach so more many people that are not in our pews, not in our buildings, because God has shifted us every once in a while. God will shake a world just to get you to shift, just to get you to do something different. And the power of this is that all, we already have these wonders of technology. The Internet was in, invented before coronavirus. Facebook Live was invented before coronavirus because God said, I'm going to give you a weapon that you don't even know you know how to use it right now. But there's going to come a day where you can't come in the building. But guess what? You already got a weapon in your arsenal. You already got a sword in your shield. You already got the weapons you knew. You already got the tools in your toolbox to continue to let the gospel go forward. Family, I got news for you. We can't worship in the sanctuary, but we're worshiping all over this city. I, I, I'm just so excited. Salem Sanctuary came, is, is built to fit about 400. We, we only got a handful here, but guess what? Now we even got a bigger sanctuary. We got a bigger building. We got, we got more pews than we can handle. And guess what? We didn't have to get another mortgage. We didn't have to take out another loan to build a bigger building. All we had to do was shift our ministry to reach so many people. God broke out. I got news for you. The coronavirus has us living under restrictions, saying we can only gather in small numbers, saying we are restricted in our movements, saying our lives are being disrupted, saying that we cannot gather in our churches like we once could. But I got news for you. God broke out of the church a long time ago. Right here in the text, the Bible says that the temple could not contain God. When God began to speak, the doorposts began to shake. The walls were buckling because they could not hold the presence of God. And I got news for you. It doesn't matter if I can't come to 3918 Crozier anymore. It does not matter because God broke out of buildings a long time ago. A building can't hold a God that's everywhere at the same time. A building can't hold a God that hold the world in his hand. If God can hold the world, the building is attached to the world and the world is attached to God's hand. God's saying, I'm everywhere. I'm right in your living room. I'm in your car. I'm in your office. Wherever you be, that's where I am. I got news for you. Don't miss me when I tell you this. Salem, let me assure you of two things. God is bigger than the temple. God is bigger than the sanctuary. God is bigger than restrictions. God is bigger than this nation. God is bigger than this world. If you don't believe me, hear what David says in Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend unto the heel of the Lord? Who shall stand in this holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall ascend into the hill of the Lord. Now guess what? We all got to do like them gates. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up. The everlasting doors. God is bigger than the temple. Yes, his presence is in this place, but it is not limited to this place. Wherever we are, God is. And I thank you, David. David says this as I close this message. Wherever I may be speaking to you, David says this in one of my favorite psalms. He says, where can I flee from your presence, O Lord? If I take the wings of a dove and, and the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost parts of the sea, there your hands will guide me. But watch when he tells me this. This makes me excited when he tells me this. David said, if I make my bed in hell, Thou are right there. I got news for you. If he can meet you in hell, he can meet you in your living room. If he can meet you in hell, he can meet, come on, Eric, help me. If he can meet you in your car, if he can meet you in hell, he can meet you wherever you may be. I came to shout with you this morning. God is right where you are. God is sitting beside you. God says, I know you got to have six feet between you, but guess what? God said, I'll put my arms around you because I'm immune for any kind of virus. I'm immune for any kind of bacteria. God says, I don't need hand sanitizer. My hand will clean you I'll cover you with the blood of Jesus Christ wherever you may be God is right there with you Salem I came to shout with you God is in the temple he's in the streets he's on Facebook live he's on social media he's wherever you need him to be I know this is time of anxiety I know we're all wondering what's going to happen tomorrow I know we're looking at our bank accounts wondering how long the money is last I know we're wondering if we still gonna have jobs on Monday I, I know we're wondering how are we gonna make it but I got news for you there's a story in scripture about a little boy that had two fish and five loaves of bread 
and he gave it to Jesus. When he gave it to Jesus, Jesus said, just put it in my hand and watch me break it. And every time he broke it, it multiplied. I got news for you. If God can multiply fish, if God can multiply bread, he can multiply your bank account. He can multiply your paper towels. He can multiply your groceries. He can multiply your eggs. He can multiply your milk. He can multiply whatever you need. God has already provided. Just give it to the man that holds the world in his hand. And watch God bless it. But I got news for you. I'm still going to close it with the same old story. It was one Friday on Calvary that the world experienced the greatest disruption. The sun refused to shine. The moon dipped down in blood. Dead men walked the streets of New Jerusalem. Jesus died. But guess what? Three days later, he got up with all power in the palm of his hand. And I got news for you. Just hold on just a little while longer. Just hold on. It looks like Friday right now. It looks like the world is going crazy. It looks like the sun is not going to shine again. But that's what that was Friday. That was Saturday. But early Sunday morning, God walked out of the temple. And I got news for you. Just hold on, family. The stone is going to roll away. God's going to walk out of the grave. And he's going to bring every one of us with us. Life is going to be restored. Families are going to be reconnected. Jobs are going to be given. In times like these, God is still good. God is still merciful. God is still all-powerful. Times of disruption. We will not be distracted. We're going to hold on. Because we still believe Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. The night gets dark, and it gets hard. We all have anxiety. And family, just because you're worried, does not mean you don't have faith. Just because you're cautious does not mean you don't have faith. Just because you're careful about where you go does not mean you don't have faith. Faith tells me that the sun will shine again. Nights are hard. But I've never seen a night last one second than it's supposed to. Because when the sun comes up, it chases away all darkness. Jesus is rising. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto you. If Jesus can die, and rise again. We can grow through valleys and rise again. May God bless you and may God keep you. I would invite you wherever you are, if you need a deeper relationship with God, if you need somebody to pray for you, I may can't hold your hand but I can direct message you. I can put a post on you. If somebody wants to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, the doors of the church still are open. You may can't walk down this aisle, but you know what? It never took walking down an aisle to be saved. It never took touching a preacher's hand. Only thing it takes is to believe in your heart, saying, Lord, I love you. I want you to take care of me. I want you to give me strength for every day. He's still good, wherever you may be. If you accept Christ right now, if you need somebody to pray for you, call the church. Put a post on Facebook. We'll be there for you. If you got a need, if we can do it, we'll be there for you. Salem is still moving forward. We've been here 131 years. We haven't stopped in 131 years, and we're not going to stop right now. We're going to keep loving you. We're going to keep being a blessing to you. Join us on next Sunday for our Facebook Live broadcast. 
We are expanding our reach. We are growing. You're going to see us popping up on your social media in so many different ways because the church hadn't stopped. The church just shifted. And as we close this, I'm going to ask our music ministry just to bless us with just a, a praise song, a little worship to close out this worship service. And family, till we meet again, God still loves you. God still blessing. And God still providing. May God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, you could ask or think according to his power that worketh in you. You, God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on god cause he won't give up on you he's able he's able is able to do just what he said he would do he's gonna fulfill every promise to you don't give up on god cause he won't give up on you he's able He's able. He's able. He's able. Just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Wherever you are, I invite you and join in our benediction. Just bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this time of worship. In so many different ways. In so many people. I pray for wherever this word entered. Whether it be a home, whether it be a workplace whether it be a hospital or a nursing home. Father, we continue to give you all the glory and all the honor. I pray for my brothers and I pray for my sisters. I pray for this entire world, this country, this state, and this city as we are faced with so much anxiety. We promise that we will not allow the disruption to become a distraction to our worship because it's our worship that gets us through. It's our worship that dries our tears. It's our worship that gives us peace. It's our worship that gives us joy. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling 
and present us faultless before his presence with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And shall we all say a collectively, Amen. Till we meet again.